Okay, everyone, welcome back. Um, we are headed into the 2022 MLB season, finally. Um, there was a long time we, was, we were not sure if it was going to happen. Um, the lockout, um, the lockout some more. Uh, then there was a little bit more lockout. Um, so we made it. Um, we broke through free agency. Um, and now we're going to do a little Yankees preview as opening day is almost upon us. I think we're going to drop this on the Wednesday before. Um, and, you know, we are, I was a little shocked that we're actually, we're going to get the full 162, but I'm pumped that we are. I'm sure they're going to have to squeeze some things around, do some scheduling, but that's what they get paid the big bucks for. Uh, we'll have to do a few double headers here and there, but I'm excited for baseball, Nick. Are you? Absolutely. If you would have told me, a couple of weeks ago that we were going to get 162 games and the season was only going to be delayed by a week. I would have signed for that in a heartbeat. I really thought that we were going to look at, you know, months without baseball. So it's good to be back. It really is just rewarding that we're going to get a full 162 game season, not to mention normal season considering, yeah, we played 162 last year, but that was with COVID restrictions still in play in terms of fans. So a packed house on opening day, for 162 games of baseball, that's something we haven't seen since 2019. So it's pretty, pretty great to be back. You're going to be at opening day, right? I will be, whether it's Thursday or Friday is up in the air because Thursday looks like horrible weather-wise, but I'll be there uh, whichever, whichever day it happens. Love that. Love that. Um, so what are you thinking? Um, what, what, so, all right, I'll start with this. The Yankees, this offseason, we did an offseason um, pre, uh, preview video. Now, this is the Yankees uh, preview video for 2022, where we thought the Yankees were going to sign Correa. We thought they were – or he was a thought. We thought they were going to sign Story. We thought maybe Starling Marte was an option. We thought this guy was – we thought that guy was an option. Nowhere in anyone's – in our previews, um, and I don't think anyone's preview – so a few people had IKF um, coming to the Yankees, Isaiah kind of Falefa. Nobody had Josh Donaldson <laughs> uh, being a Yankee for a multitude of reasons. Um, but he wound up being um, the addition of the Aussies. And if you want to count um, re-signing Anthony Rizzo kind of as a just kind of repeating from last year. So we got Josh Donaldson. We got Isaiah kind of Falefa, re-signed Rizzo, brought in Miguel Castro for the bullpen and improved defensively at catcher just bringing in a few different guys um underwhelming overall it's it's i think it'll be effective when you look at it under a microscope um defensively it's like okay yes we got better here got better there that's great to see um but what it could have been was something really special and i don't think it necessarily was that where, where are you at with the yankees offseason yeah i think that's the word that I would use as well. And you said it underwhelming when you look at the fact that they went into an off season with their two major areas of need being shortstop and first base and the players available at those positions, whether it was Seager, Correa story at shortstop or Olsen and Freeman at first base to come away with IKF and Rizzo. Yes, that's underwhelming. That being said, the notion that we ran back the same team is completely, completely wrong. This is a better team in every facet. You said defensively. I think that is massively important. Yes, offensively, you're probably not going to get a lot out of the catcher position unless Kyle Higashioka keeps up his 1,700 OPS spring training. They went all in. You, you never know. <laughs> Wait, you never know. Higashioka kind of reminds me of that friend that you hang around like once and you're like, dude, this guy is awesome. We need to be around him like all the time. Let's go out with him tomorrow. Let's go out the next week, the next weekend. And then you start to spend a little bit more time around him you're like oh okay this is why we don't hang around him too much because in like a small sample size Kyle goes gosh yoga is like Johnny Bench but then yep. like you kind of spread him out over a little bit you're like all right this now I know why he's Kyle gosh yoga exactly it's your buddy that's a riot at the bar and he's a great time one weekend and then the next weekend you remember he's a drunk puker and he doesn't pay for any of his own beer so yeah it's exactly. I, I agree <laughs> we're probably going to get very frustrated with Kyle gosh at the plate this season that being said to go all in on defense and catcher, something I've been asking for for a while. It was pretty evident a lot of the Yankees pitchers did not like pitching to Gary Sanchez. I never liked the narrative that he was lazy. I don't think he was lazy. I just don't think he was very good at it. And he had a lot of different catching coaches, and the Yankees finally said, you know what? They threw their hands in the air and said, Gary Sanchez is not the guy. They moved on. They're not going to get a lot of offense out of the catching position, but they're going to be great defensively. 
Yes, Anthony Rizzo's underwhelming. They had Luke Voigt for like 50 games, and it was a combination of Jay Bruce, DJ LeMayhew, and, and a bunch of scrubs at first base last year. Improvement. IKF is an improvement over Glaber's defense at shortstop, not to mention even after we went away from Glaber, we were playing Tyler Wade and Andrew Velasquez there. IKF is a much, much better hitter than both of those guys. Improvement. Josh Donaldson over Gio Shella. Defensively, about the same. Offensively, major improvement. Josh Donaldson was 11th in hard hit rate in baseball last year. He's an 800, 850 OPS guy. He's in major improvement. Joey Gallo over Clint Frazier. Improvement. I think the only area that you could say maybe we want to address, I know you're on the same page as me. I wish we had better insurance for Aaron Hicks in center field because I'm not buying that he's going to stay healthy. But if you look at every Yankees need, they addressed it, not in the flashiest ways, but this is a better, more complete, more well-structured baseball team than it's been in a long time. Yeah. Oh no. And I totally agree. My, my biggest thing was I wanted Aaron Hicks to be sent, I don't know, to triple A. I, I, I know you can't do that, but I just don't want to see him anywhere near Yankee stadium this year. Um, I just think he's an absolutely worthless player. Hopefully I'll be proven wrong. I was, again, I, I love saying um, that I was right about this, but um, I was, I hated that contract when they did it. Um, I still hated it. I think I, that was the one thing I was very proud to be right on. Um, but I mean, the biggest things, I mean, I was on the Andre and Simmons train, um, at the beginning of the off season, obviously you were not <laughs> in the no, total, never. In the no. hater, but I was on him for the fact that I wanted to emphasize defense this off season. If you wanted this, if you want this pitching staff to repeat what they did last year, you needed to tighten up the defense because they were striking out people at a rate. I don't think that is really that possible to do again is Nestor Cortez necessarily going to have this insane season. Is Jameson Tyon going to be another pitcher of the month? type guy what is Luis Severino you have all these question marks so at least now the question marks are not behind them at least they're still on the mound you know right. you know like it's like okay we what is Luis Severino you just have to worry about Luis Severino you don't have to worry about okay cool he gets a ground out now is Glaber Torres going to make that play um is uh why am I blanking I'll uh, oh, just get Gary Sanchez Gary Sanchez is going to block that slider that O2 slider in the dirt like are we going to have these issues now when these pitches are now performing um so I I'm I really was mostly satisfied with the Yankees all season, but it's, it's like we're kind of diving under a microscope into all this, all these different things that made them better. Was it really that great of an off season of what it could have been? We could have had Matt Olson, but you know, it's, it's all like the, you know, the cost affected, blah, 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 all that stuff. Was it worth the cost? Was it worth the extension? All that BS. So overall I'm satisfied with the Yankees all season, but again, underwhelming. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think that that's a fair take to have. People are allowed to be disappointed, but at the same time, I think a lot of our gut reactions, at least from my perspective, was, oh, this team's not going to be that good. You kind of see the pieces come together. They're still a very good baseball team, and I think they're a better team than they were last year. So I think people should get over a little bit how frustrating the offseason might have been and start to be optimistic about what this team could do. So let's do exactly that. That's a great transition. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to break down a couple categories, team MVP for this upcoming season, comeback player of the year, little rookie of the year action, uh, what are, what we think the win-loss record is going to be, and where we kind of think we they fall in terms of the playoff run um, ultimately, and that kind of falls in with the win-loss record. So I'll start. Um, I think the team MVP this year, um, and I think this is who it needs to be, is Garrett Cole. Um, you know, we, uh, we just, I just kind of talked a little bit about the importance of pitching and what really carried this team a lot of the time last year. I mean, their OPS was not good. They had struggling offense outside of healthy seasons from Stanton and judge the rest of the offense was really not that effective overall. Um, I think that it's going to be better. I think there's a lot of reason to think Joey Gallo could improve. There's a lot of reasons to think maybe Aaron Hicks does pick it up. Anthony Rizzo has a better kind of longer stretch of time. But I think that if they're going to be the staff that they were again, it starts with Garrett Cole. It starts as a leader of the staff. It starts with him being who that, like that one performance. Remember that one performance in Houston where you went the full complete game. He was just like, I am better than you. Like, I, I think he's got to be that kind of guy the entire year and not shit the bed in, in Boston, you know, not, not have these like bad outings where he's going five innings. Like, I think he needs to be the ace 
that they need to be so that the rest of the pitching staff can kind of fall in line and be like, that's who I need to be like. That's who I need to be mm-hmm. like. I need to go out and give seven innings. I need to be the stud on the mound. I need to make my pitch. I need to be effective. I need to learn. I need to get better throughout the season. All the things that Garrett Cole does well, he needs to do well throughout the entirety of the season for that pitching staff to be the same thing that it was last year. So he's my team MVP. He has to make it happen. No, I agree with you. I think he is the most important Yankee. You know, they could function without some of their other guys, maybe playing a full season or being as productive. They need Garrett Cole to be an ace. And I saw a tweet today. It bothered me a lot. It said, will Garrett Cole bounce back this season? Bounce back. The guy was the runner up for the American League Cy Young Award. So I get that there's some questions post fighter tag. I personally think, you know, you got to break a season up into, into phases where it was tack then it was post tack he struggled a little bit then he really found his groove you know that start in anaheim that start in houston where he's striking out a ton of guys looking like vintage Garrett cole and then he goes on the aisle for the hamstring and he's really just not the same after that including the start in boston so not that i want to give him a full pass but i have no doubt that Garrett cole's an ace what he needs to be better at is he needs to beat his divisional opponents you know because boston it wasn't just the wild card game he had a couple shitty starts against them during the middle of the season, he had some shitty starts against Tampa. So can Garrett Cole be the stopper we need? And most importantly, can he help us beat our inner division rivals? Because it could be a tight division. So I'm with you. I think Garrett Cole has to be the team MVP. If I would pick another guy, it would be Aaron Judge, just because assuming this is still a contract year, he needs to go out and do what he did last year, you know, play another 148, 150 games, you know, have that 900 plus OPS and just be that presence and force in the middle of the order. You know, he's one of the he's one of the top five or 10 players in baseball when he's healthy. And if he's healthy, he's going to produce for the New York Yankees. Do you almost want him to not get the extension so that maybe he plays a little better throughout throughout the year? A little motivation? Like they're like um, waving it in front of him? I, it does, I think it goes both ways. I think that if he – I think I don't think Judge is the kind of guy to – get a contract and become complacent. I think if yeah, anything, it'll show, you know, I think he want he really wants to be here. So I'd be pretty disheartened if they didn't get it done. And on the flip side of that, you know, look at what Michael Conforto did last year in the contract season. You could tell it was kind of wearing on him that essentially every game, every at bat, you know, you're fluctuating your, your value and in, in what contract you're going to get. And here he is still unsigned. So I'd much rather it not be a storyline. I'm hoping that the Yankees have this extension done we wake up Thursday morning to the announcement that it's done. He's a Yankee for life. Just because I think for, for everyone involved, it just takes a lot of stress away. Sidebar from the Yankees, but how crazy is that Michael Conforto is like, hey, guys, I'm hurt. Like, I'm going to wait until I'm 100% to sign. That's like that's like that um, uh, commercial where the guy like tips the ball to bounce. He's like, it was on me, coach. <laughs> yeah. Why are, you, why are you telling anyone that you're hurt? Just sign the contract. No one, no one was going to know about your weird shoulder injury, Michael Conforto. Yeah, and they said <laughs> he was doing drills, like diving or something. Why, why are you doing that? Why? Unsigned. Why would you ever be doing that? He's not even like he's like some defense. Like you're a corner outfield. The Phillies are literally signing people that don't even know how to play defense. It doesn't matter. Just just hit. Just practice. I don't know. It's, it's That's a crazy story. Shake it off. Tell nobody. Yeah. <laughs> sign literally, the right? Exactly. It later you heard it on a swing and batting practice after you signed on the dotted line you idiot so right. weird sidebar so weird. Yes. mini sidebar there michael conforto is an idiot. um all right who is your comeback player of the year so there's so many candidates for this right you look at dj you look at glaber um i think joey gallo it's a little bit unfair because overall he had you know he was killing it with texas and he didn't play well at all with us i think he's a candidate um I'm going to go with Luis Severino, though. Okay. Look, we, we haven't seen this guy pitch a full season since 2018. Down the stretch, he wasn't particularly good. I think he's made he made three starts total and uh, five, including the playoffs. He pitched a couple uh, games last year. Look, he needs to be a frontline starter. And you can't expect the full innings load from him. I don't think you're getting 150 innings. It'll probably be somewhere closer, maybe 110, 120. But he's a guy that we need – as the summer progresses to get built up and really kind of become that one a to Cole's one, if we're going to go on any sort of run, he has such a higher ceiling than any of our other starters, not named Garrett Cole. And I like our other starters, but vintage Sevy could be the X factor to this entire season. So I'm going to go with him. Yeah. It, it does scare me. Cause I felt like we were in this same situation last year where we were crying just for a number two and we went with Kluber. 
you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, he was kind of the default number two, you know, you could have thrown some other names out there. He was kind of the guy who just, he just, you know, you placed in that role and he was great in the beginning of the season, but then he got hurt. And then we were without a number two again. And it felt like all these guys tried to fill in throughout the year and they did well. Tyone had some great times, obviously Cortez too, but I feel like we're in that same situation where we're like guessing with this number two, which just doesn't make me feel confident going into the year but I that which is even more the reason why Severino needs to be this comeback player of the year even be like not a shell of what he was in like in that almost Cy Young season but just be like close to effective you know just like right. you can I, I don't even think he needs to be one one a one b to Cole if he's just like like more the two three range but like you're getting like consistency from him I'm happy with that just so yeah. we know what we have with him and then maybe he can turn it on you know as his arm starts to build up a little more he's more comfortable on the mound so I don't know I'd, I, I would love to see him be um close to what he was during that what was what was his almost Cy Young? was that 2018 2017 2017, 2017. He was there. yep um so my comeback player of the year is actually DJ LeMahieu um I'm thinking I'm thinking that with him kind of returning to this super utility role and what we originally signed him for, um, that he could return to the player that he was, you know, during that season. Um, you know, so Donaldson's going to be at third slash DH. Um, uh, I, I, I always forget his name. Isaiah Kiner Falefa. I always, I, I think IKF. I, I'm just gonna say IKF. Okay. IKF at shortstop, Torres at second, um, Rizzo at first. So you, uh, Lemay, you can kind of just go around the infield, which is what we originally intended him for. Um, I'm thinking that after his 2019 season, where he was this stud, and then he kind of, I don't know, uh, maybe this was just me feeling that out, but there was kind of like this um, aura around him that he was the best player on the team outside of Garrett Cole. Like, oh, maybe he is better than Aaron Judge. Like, I remember in MLB The Show, they gave him, like, a 95 rating going into that year, and Judge was, like, a 91 or something like that. I, obviously, the show ratings are a little juiced near there. But, you know, they kind of, like, there, were, there was this idea that DJ LeMahieu was the best player on the Yankees, the best hitter on the Yankees. And I think that was a little bit too much for him. I think that's why you saw his strikeout rates go up, um, his average go down, because he was trying to be a little bit more than he is. This year, I think he can kind of return – to the idea that he's just like, all right, I'm a super utility guy. I'm just going to spray the ball around the field. I'm going to get hits and I'm just going to be the DJ LeMahieu of Colorado in 2019. So that's why, Mm -hmm. because he can kind of focus on not being the stud of the New York Yankees anymore. I think that maybe it was a little bit too much for him or he took it too seriously. He can come back a little bit and just go hit 330 and everyone can relax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I think that it was just such a shock last year for everyone, myself included, where here was a guy who was, a top five MVP finisher in the two prior seasons, just smacking the ball all over the place, hitting home runs in for power. And he becomes essentially a, a league average hitter, you know, with really no slugging whatsoever. So I think that it's going to be so important that this year, the lineup around him be improved instead of it just being judge and stand and saying, all right, we need DJ to pick up the slack. Just let DJ be what you said. He'll play 140 games, move all over the diamond. Give me like a like a, a 110 weighted runs created plus or something like that. Just 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 hit for like I don't need 25 homers from him. I just need yeah. him to you know put the ball in play, get that slugging up from where it was because it was in like the low threes, mid threes, which is pretty disgusting for what <laughs> he was doing before. Just be better. I don't need him to be the MVP DJ or MVP caliber DJ. I think that guy's gone with the juice balls, but he does look better this spring. He's been hitting the ball harder. Maybe he was dealing with that hernia for longer than we thought. I'm with you. I think DJ definitely bounces back to a degree in 2022. We've seen lately him not um, being in that leadoff spot. Do you like that? Donaldson in the leadoff spot kind of surprised me. What's, what's the reasoning behind that? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't love DJ in the leadoff spot. I guess it depends. Oh, yeah, I agree with I that. Guess, yeah. I, yeah. I guess it depends, you know, uh, what his OBP is, how many walks he's taking. I mean, I personally, I love the idea of having a guy in the leadoff spot. If you're not going to have speed there, which we really don't have anyone, you know, that you could put yeah. uh, a guy that's a, that's a risk to, to just take you deep. You know what I'm saying? You know, like it doesn't need to be, you know, a single and then, you know, judge. I love the idea of just, you immediately go through the ringer of Donaldson, judge Rizzo Stanton. So I'm, I'm personally a fan yeah, of it. I and, like I think, that a lot. and I think DJ in the middle of the lineup too, you know, getting, getting at bats around a, a Stanton, a Gallo, a Glaber. I personally think if he, you know, 
if he's there, I think that he's going to get some, some more chances. Whereas it was like, all right, Aaron judge is up next. So we'll, you know, we got to get DJ out. I think, I think it's going to be a little bit, I, a little less pressure on him, I guess, in that kind of spot in the lineup. It'll be interesting to see how we get mad at Aaron Boone for, for that come, come May. <laughs> immediately. I'm sure. Immediately. <laughs> Literally immediately. Uh, opening, uh, opening day, uh, Rizzo's going to lead off. We're going to be like, nope, done. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Um, all right. Who is your rookie of the year? Uh, I love Luis Heel. I know he's not breaking yeah. camp with the team. I just have a feeling that we're going to see him sooner rather than later this year. Um, you know, I could, I could have said Clark Schmidt. I do like Clark Schmidt a lot. Just, I, I just have this weird feeling about Luis Heel that we're going to see him have potentially kind of like a Seve type 2017 breakout where he comes up and he is just otherworldly like his his stuff is disgusting his fastball is one of the better ones i've seen come through our system in a, a long time really seb is the only other one i could even compare it to um so i think whenever he does come up i think that he'll be here to stay and he'll be a guy that's in the conversation for the playoff rotation i love I, I actually did go with um clark schmidt but i i love Luis here I, he was so good last year too i mean he mm-hmm. was just he was just like um poised you know, for like mm-hmm. someone who was like, okay, like, dude, we kind of need you to throw like important innings in these important games. And he was just like, like, he was almost like, he felt like our number two at some, yep. point, you know, like it was like, okay, oh, thank God heels on the mound. This guy's making like his yep. fifth start, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, I, I, I like him a lot. I think, I think you're right. He's going to be a mainstay in the rotation at some point, yeah. depending on how injuries flow and all that different stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a sucker for guys who pitch with emotion and just have that mound yeah. presence. So it's like, that's why I love Seve so much. I really enjoy watching, you know, Wandy Peralta pitch. So keel to see him, you know, striking guys out, getting all pumped up in, like you said, big innings, you know, as, as a rookie that I really, really just love watching that guy pitch. And I think that shows you that he's got that stud mentality. Like, you, you know, I think that Clark Schmidt, I, I actually pick him for uh, my rookie of the year, but I don't think he's got like that, um, that next level mentality where it's like, I'm better than you. You know, I think he's mm-hmm. got great stuff, but I think Louis Hill kind of has that in his mind. You see that on the mound with kind of the way he's presented. But I, I went with um, Clark Schmidt as my rookie of the year because um, Brian Hoke, how do you say that? Hawk? Hoke, yep. Hoke, Hoke Brian Hoke. Got- um, deemed him his rookie of the spring. So I'm just kind of following in our ball yeah, footstep and, and just kind of rolling with that. I love his yeah. curveball. I love, love, love a good 12-6. Um, yeah. A good one. So I'm just going to ride that. Um, and I don't know, maybe he turns yeah. into – I'm trying to think of a good rookie season recently. I'm not going to think one off the top. Of my if head. he can so, play yeah. the 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 Tanner Houck role, what yes. he did for the Red Sox <laughs> last year, where he's not really a starter. He's kind of a swingman, multi-inning guy out of the – Pen power righty. I think that that's perfect. He made George Springer look stupid the other day. I don't know if you saw. I had him swinging out of his shoes. Pitching Ninja posted it, but uh, no, Love Clark that. Schmidt. Yeah, <laughs> Clark Schmidt pitched great this spring. He deserves to make the team. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of him. So, so we'll uh, we'll see. Excited to see that. I think both those are good answers. Um, what is your win loss record for the Yanks this year? Uh, I, so I went with ninety six wins. Uh, just the way I look at it, I think this division is going to be so tough. It's the best one in baseball by far, if you ask me. So I don't have anyone winning a hundred games. I know Tampa did last year. Uh, but I think that, you know, the blue Jays will be a little bit better. I'm never going to count out the Rays. We won 92 last year. I figure four more wins. That's not a, a crazy stretch. And I do think that'll be enough to win the division. So I do have them winning 96 games and the AL East. Interesting. I actually have um, them dropping a few games, but still um, we'll get to the playoffs part, but I still, but still kind of being in a similar position. I'm going 89 and 73. Um, I kind of think the rest of the AL middled out. I don't think we're going to see anyone like the Rangers, for example, they were 35 games behind first place with the exception of maybe the Orioles. I don't think, Mm -hmm. I think, a lot of the AL kind of came a little bit closer together um, just in the way like the Tigers are better this year. The Rangers are obviously better this year. I think the Angels honestly got a little better. The Mariners obviously a little bit better. The Central a little bit better, obviously, and then the ALE still being, you know, an absolute powerhouse. Um, so I think that the just the AL itself just getting a little bit better um, brings a few wins down for the Yankees. Um, so I got 89 and 73, but I think mm-hmm. they kind of have a similar type season. Mm-hmm. No, I don't doubt that. I, I think that when you look at what the AL was like in, you know, 2018, 2019, or 2017, even there were so many just terrible teams. I don't think we have 
really too much of that. The Orioles are still going to be horrible. Um, <laughs> and I think the A's are going to be pretty terrible too. But other than that, no one's going to be atrocious. I think that's also a big key that people don't really talk about enough. The Orioles won 52 games last year, and eight of them were against the Yankees. If you want to win this division, you need to go better than 11 and 8 against the Orioles. Like, I, they really need to go like 14 and 5, 15 and 4 at the absolute minimum. 2019, they won the division. They went 17 and 2 against the Orioles. So I think that really is going to be the key. Whoever wins this division will probably be the one that beat up on the Orioles the most. The Orioles are like a weird bobblehead night away from being like the Savannah Bananas. They could not care less about winning baseball games. <laughs> I don't even know what their goal as a company is because they're not really making money. No one goes to watch these games. Like, what is your end game, Baltimore Orioles? They push back the, the fences at Camden Yards, too. Let's have field. Home runs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, that'll, that'll bring them in. That'll I don't know in. what they thought that would fix. Um, I don't know if they were trying to plan on doing that only for when the opponents are at bat and then bringing them back in when, when they're up. But no, I mean, the Orioles are going to be terrible again this year. They do have some young talent coming, but for now, and at least the next year or two, they're going to be horrific still. Yeah. They saw Adley Rushman was actually going to be pretty good. So, like, we got to move those fences back. <laughs> we, can, yeah. we cannot have this. We cannot have a good catcher on our team. We got to move him back, move him back. Exactly. Um, all right. So, where do you think the Yankees fall in the playoff race, in the playoff run? Do they make the playoffs wild card? Are they going all the way to the World Series, ALCS? Kind of what's your, what's your end of the season picture for them? Like, I, I always want to pick us to win the World Series. I don't know if I can. I, I kind of think that they really have to win a pennant this year. Um, I think that, you know, there's no one in the AL that's clearly head and shoulders better than them. Like the Astros got weaker. I don't buy the White Sox at all. So if you're saying that they can come out of the AL East, which I think they have every capability to, there's no reason they can't come out of the AL. Uh, so I'll say they win the pennant. And then just because I, I can't, I can't, confidently pick us to win the whole thing i'll say we lose to either the braves or the dodgers in in the national league whoever gets there all right all right i'm gonna disagree entirely um i think that we kind of fall, like i said kind of fall into the same situation where we're kind of in like that wild card game it's a different format this year I, to be honest there's so much of, other best shit of going three on yeah. i didn't really mm -hmm. realize what was it so what's the format for the playoffs so I think it's best of – I think the top two seeds don't have to play in this round, and then three through six play a best of three, I'm pretty sure, and then those two winners go to the division series. Okay, so I, I think that they're going to – they're not going to be one of the top two teams in the AL. I, I really do think it's going to be the Blue Jays and the, the White Sox. Um, I am really impressed with the Blue Jays' um, starting rotation. I know that some people really aren't. Um, I think that – Ryu, I, I've always been a huge fan of Barrios. Um, I think a full season of him is really going to kind of turn them around. Plus, they got Kevin Gausman. I love him. I think his splitter is disgusting. That's not a pitch that a lot of people see. Um, and then they have Nate Pearson coming out of the bullpen, um, who could be a starter if um, – fuck, I forget who their fifth guy was. Um, oh, um, they got Kikuchi. Uh, uh, Kikuchi, yeah. If he kind of doesn't really pan out the way they intended because he's been kind of up and down in his career – um, if he doesn't pan out, they have Nate Pearson, one of their top prospects in the pen, uh, similar to how we have Clark Schmidt and all these other guys. Um, so I, I kind of think they're set up for success. Um, I'm, this isn't meant to be a Blue Jays preview, but uh, the, <laughs> the, the idea being that um, I think they're going to kind of run, not run away with the division, but be um, kind of one of those first two teams. I like the White Sox a lot too. So I think the Yankees kind of find themselves in that three to six range. And I think they lose in that first round of the playoffs, just for the fact that I don't know who their number two is. I right. don't know who wins um, game two. And if Garrett, if Garrett Cole has pitched as he has in the, in the, obviously he was hurt last year, but if he hasn't, if, if, he, if he doesn't perform in the playoffs, then it's like, okay, now what, you know? Yeah, no, so it's going to be. That, that's, that's where I'm at again. And see, that's what sucks about Garrett Cole right now, because he could go out and literally win the Cy Young. You know, he could give you a 2-5 ERA, win 20 games. And if he goes out and shits the bed in game one of whether it's the wild card series, division series, that's going to be a concern. It's, it's going to be a concern for everybody. He, he, I'd almost rather him pitch mediocrely in the regular season, you know, have a 3-5 ERA and just come out and turn it up a notch and shove in, in October. So I don't know, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with him. 
I'd say the White Sox don't scare me at all. I don't know why. I just think they're so fraudulent and they got kind of exposed in the playoffs last year. I like Dylan's East this year. On the like Central. I yeah, think, no, he's I big. think he's a Carlos Rodon type. I think he's just going to – No, they're, they're he's talented. He's right up on him, yeah. They're a talented team. I just can't say they scare me. That Blue Jays lineup, though, is is ridiculous. I, I will say this about the Blue Jays. I do think it's going to be tough to replace the production they got from Semyon, who was – third in the MVP race and Robbie Ray who won the Cy Young as much as I like Kevin Gossman as great as that lineup is I do think they still need to replace those guys production to a team that missed the playoffs at the same time though with the lineup you know everyone getting another year of experience with Springer hopefully being healthy for them and then a full year of Barrios which I think is the the biggest change in last year's Blue Jays team to this one I do think that they ultimately, you know, you can make the case they're the best constructed team in the American League. If so, you know, so if I had to pick anyone else besides us, it would be the Blue Jays. But I'm not as completely sold that they're just head and shoulders better than us. I'm not, I'm not sold on that yet. I'm I'm loosely sold on it. <laughs> I'm I'm you got the contract in front of me. I haven't signed it yet, but I'm 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 thinking about the terms. Uh, I, I, and I stopped myself before because I almost said Garrett Cole hasn't been good in the playoffs. He has been good in the playoffs traditionally. He just had a bad start. And But who knows if that was – I mean, we know it was hamstring related, but who knows if that's like maybe Yankee pressure. Was it Boston? Was it this? Was it a trillion different facts because he didn't pitch well in Boston during the season? So that's why it, it makes you hesitate after last year, and that's kind of what I hesitated before. It makes you hesitate that our, our ace is kind of like, okay, well, do we – like is our is game one a lock? You know, it, it yeah. just you like think a second. Like, okay, wait, it's it's not. It, it, you know, in in your head, and I think in most cases it is. But like, it just you, you got got a bad taste in your mouth from last year. Is all. Is Listen, right? spider tack or not, hamstring or not, Cole has not been good at Fenway. This goes back to his Astros that, that, days. Yeah. So he needs to, like I said before, he. It, he doesn't need to prove to me that he's still an ace. I'm pretty confident that he is. He needs to show me that he could beat our divisional opponents consistently. Yeah. That is, that is what I need to see from Garrett Cole in 2022. Yeah. And then, but that's why I kind of fall, have them losing in this first round of the playoffs, just because I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, who is going to throw these games? Or maybe a Luis Hill comes and, be, and beats number two. And we're like, okay, we're set. No, no, not even right. thinking about it. Maybe Luis Severino has a season that we want, but it's kind of just like, okay, where, where are we at right now? Mm-hmm. And that, that's my biggest thing is the question marks going through this season is just like, all right, who's, who, who's up, you know? Yep. And, and I don't know if you agree with me here, but I think that's where a Clark Schmidt, a Luis yeah. Heel, you know, you can throw a couple of these other names out there, these big arms. I think that they're going to groom them in the swing men kind of roles where, you know, you can ask your starter, whether it's Severino, Montgomery, you know, whoever it is, Hey, you're, you literally need to give us four innings, empty the tank. Don't let up any more than one, you know, one or two runs. We're going to go, we got a guy behind you that's going to come in and he's going to give us three more solid innings. If you look at how the Braves won the world series last year, uh, if you look at, you know, how the Rays got there the year before, they're not have, they don't have four stars that they're expecting to go six or seven. You know, that, that's just not the case. I would say you expect that from Garrett Cole, but everyone else, if you can give us four shutout innings or four solid innings and you can come in with a power arm behind them, I think that, I think that's arguably a more effective way to win in October. Absolutely. And we, I think we, we've seen the best and worst of a lot of these younger arms, um, but the Rays have guys that just come out of nowhere and we're like, oh, where did that guy come from? But he's been in their system for two years. I'm sure dedicated Rays fans are like, oh yeah, I saw that guy last year. We saw him in spring training. Like, like, so like they're, they're not coming out of nowhere for us, but I think to the rest of the league, like if Clark Schmidt comes out of nowhere, Louis Heal comes out of nowhere and right. he's our number two, three, everyone would be like, oh, where did you get those arms? You know? Um, so I, I think that we can kind of compete with, um, you know, the, the way other teams just randomly bring up pitchers and we're like, oh, where that, that guy wasn't that, that guy wasn't in there, um, you know, there in the beginning for them. Mm-hmm. We're thinking about them. No, if the Yankees want to win the World Series, Fangraphs just ranked their rotation number one in all of baseball today. And it's not because even before I said, you know, Severino needs to be the one A, I think that's kind of an unrealistic expectation to a degree. It's not going to be because him or Montgomery turn into suddenly, you know, this lights out all star starter it's going to be because yeah our one through five is good and then your six seven eight nine guys are also you know money good which other teams you know once you have an injury or two in the rotation you're pretty shot so that's how the yankees can be you know really competitive and win a lot of games in this season 
Yeah, and to say something nice about the Yankees, which we I haven't, I haven't said too many nice yeah. things yet. Say something nice about them. I do like their bullpen this year. <laughs> no, the bullpen is great. It's very good. Great. It's very good. And I don't think Listen, Tag Green will yeah. fall apart at the end of the year because we have some. Yeah, work. I hope not. Listen, it's a very deep pitching staff. You could argue there's not yeah. enough talent at the front of it. We like we said, Garrett Cole's the most important pitcher, but this is definitely the deepest Yankees pitching staff that I've seen them have, ar- arguably ever since I've been a fan. Like arguably, I, I don't know, I don't know they've ever been this deep on the pitching side. I agree, hundred percent. So let's let's end on the on the positive note, <laughs> saying something yeah. nice about the Yankees. Yeah, I did kind of roast a little bit. Um, baseball's back. We're back. Baseball's back. We're back. Um, any thoughts before you head over to opening day? I hope they win. I'm gonna be sad yeah. if they lose. <laughs> good note. Good note. Yeah. Good tip. <laughs> um, I hope it doesn't rain either. Yeah, we'll see. We'll figure that out. Whatever that is, it is. Probably not those details later. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, Go Yanks. Later, skaters.